good morning guys all right so i do have the window down fresh air and everything um i did take justice to school earlier and i'm at the library what i want to come on this morning and do is be obedient to release this video i'm going to be reading the word of god into your ear gates but god showed me that not only are we reading it but because we're confessing it together this is actually a prayer so view this video and sometimes we do that view this video as um we're reading the word you're hearing it but we're also praying so if it's certain scriptures that we're reading that's standing out to you i want you to claim them i want you to confess them speak them over your life over certain areas or if you like me over all areas but if it's a certain area in your life that that particular scripture is standing out to you for then go ahead and um you know do that and if y'all hear any background noise you know i'm in a public place people coming in and out people walking people driving so it's kind of bear with me because i need to get this fresh air as well so amen because i'm gonna get in here and um do a little bit more homework as well so the first thing we're going to read is deuteronomy 28 1 through 14 just kind of giving you guys some notes what we're going to be i'm sorry guys my hair look a little all but we read deuteronomy 28 1 through 14 psalms 27 psalms 23 psalms 91 we're going to be reading it and praying it so i encourage you if you're listening to the video pray it write it down go back over it confess it along with me as well or even go back and watch the video and speak it we're speaking these blessings over today over the remainder of this month which is tomorrow is the 31st it's the last day and we're also speaking them for this year going into next year but we're believing God to move for us with these this the scriptures he gave me for this because I wasn't going to come on I wasn't going to come on he told me to come on I'm going to be obedient so these are the scriptures that we're standing on and other scriptures as well that God will download but these are the ones we're going to hold on to these for every area of our life for, for this, today um, tomorrow November December the rest of the 2019 year and even going into 2020 what we're doing today is going to it's going to speak because it's released in the heaven so it's going to can continue to move in the physical so if you want to claim this for you or someone that you know i encourage you guys to do it amen and god has already blessed the word he's just telling me to get into this so deuteronomy 28 1 through 14 excuse me is focusing on the blessings for obedience it says if you fully obey the lord your god and carefully follow all his commands i give you today the lord your god will set you high above all the nations on earth all these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Three, you will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Four, the fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the cows of your herds and the lambs of your flocks will be blessed. Five, your basket and your kneading troll will be blessed. Verse six, you will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. Verse 7, the Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in 7. Verse 8, the Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. Verse 9, the Lord will establish you as his holy people. As he promised you on oath, if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. I'm, I, you know, I could break down that verse 9, but we talked about that so many times. I'm just going to continue to read. Let's keep going. Then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. That's 10, 11. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock and the crops of your ground and the land he swore to your forefathers to give you. Verse 12, the Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land and season, and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but you will borrow from none. Verse 13, the Lord will make you the head, not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Verse 14, do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. So that's, again, if you take your notes, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. And we talked about multiple times. We broke this down 
like verse for verse a lot of these we're reading today we broke them down verse by verse we've did multiple teachings on them but we're not under the law anymore we know that jesus christ came to fulfill the law he's greater than the law but i told you guys how the commands of god could be god telling you to do something or are you following the leading and guiding of god's voice his holy spirit his wisdom you're allowing god to lead and guide you he's lord and savior of your life you're following his will you're 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 open to what he wants you to do you're open to take heed okay so that you know ties into that so that's deuteronomy 28 1 through 14 right so let's move on to psalms 27 it's the next one and let me cross these out as i go psalms 27 is the next one that he showed me just receive whatever is for you if i were you i personally would receive all of them because he told me to release it for all of us but just receive it and i'll I don't, I don't really like reading them verse by verse sometimes, but I will be obedient and read them verse by verse today. Just in case if you're taking notes and that certain verse stood out to you, you could write that certain verse. So Psalms 27 is a Psalm of David. And verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Verse 2, when evil men advance against me to devour my flesh or to slander me in the footnotes, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Verse 3, though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. Verse 4, one thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Verse 5, from the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Verse 6. Then my head will be exalted. Somebody say exalted. Above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Verse 7. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. Verse 8 says, My heart says of you, seek his face right your face lord i will seek verse 9 do not hide your face from me do not turn your servant away in anger you have been my helper do not reject me or forsake me O god my savior verse 10 though my father and mother forsake me the lord will receive me and i feel like god just wants me to read you guys know how um holy spirit will begin moving and we'll start breaking these down but i don't feel like to do that today i just feel that as we're reading them these are prayers that we're offering before the lord as well corporately together okay so that's what i'm gonna do so 10 though my father and mother forsake me the lord will receive me verse 12 do not turn me over to the desire of my foes or enemies right for false witnesses rise up against me breathing out violence verse 13 i'm still confident of this i will see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living hold on guys hold on hold on hold on all right guys i'm sorry about that this is huge i'm talking about huge big mosquito came in trying to it came in through the window because you guys know i usually have my windows up in the eight the um the a the air on and it was trying to go down by my foot i'm like no nah, you got to get up out of here not today so i'm sorry guys um so let's do 12 again so do not turn me over to the desire of my foes or my enemies for false witnesses rise up against me breathing out violence I'm not, I rebuke you, Satan, in Jesus' name. We're going to stay focused with this. Verse 13. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Amen. So that's Psalms 27. Psalms 27 has 14 verses. Now we're going to go to Psalms 23. And then after Psalms 23, we're going to Psalms 91. And then we're going to close. Hold on, guys. Let me get some water. And you guys, comment below. Comment below um, in the comment section which scriptures stood out to you and, you know, which psalm or Deuteronomy stood out to you. What's, um, what kind of stood out to you this morning? What was Holy Spirit showing you for certain areas of your life of what it was for for you? So Psalms 23 verse 1 is a psalm of David and this personally one of my favorite psalms it says verse one the lord is my shepherd i shall not be in want right 
Verse 2, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. 3, he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death or the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Verse 6, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. So that's Psalms 23, and it has six verses. And let me say this really quick for someone. The purpose of this channel is for God to get all of the glory. I got to say this for someone. You guys already know that, though. But the purpose of this channel is for me to walk in my purpose with God. And really do my best to be obedient to what he's calling me to do with everything we're doing with the channel and the videos, etc., etc. This is for, for God to get the glory and it's for you guys to go deeper in your walk with God. Now, when I'm releasing a word from the Lord or we're reading or whatever we have going on with the channel, because we have various playlists and different things that we're doing with the channel, if you're used to it or even if you just check out the About tab. It's for you guys to go deeper in your walk with God. The purpose of these Bible studies, these videos, these encouragements, the faith walks, the creative hours, the prayer line calls, the live phone conference classes, the Bible studies, the Bible study packets, um, the devotionals, everything we're doing is to help you grow closer in your walk with God. But I'm going to say this for someone. You have to be the one to receive the word of God for your life. Whether God using me to be a blessing to you or your pastor or other ministries or people on YouTube or other ministries or whoever God is using. All we are is willing vessels. You have to be the one to receive that word. You got to be the one to cultivate that word and nurture that word. I don't know if because a lot of you that um, some of you have been with the channel since the beginning. Some of you are fairly new. Some of you have been on the channel for two years. Some of you have been on the channel for a little bit longer some of you has been some months some of you have been a, a year over one year some of you and then some of you i don't know because i don't always go on that thing but i i'm saying that to say this last year it was last year when we did our holy communion i told you guys about that vision that dream that i had we went to the park and we did holy communion we did bible study this is when we this was a few months after we started these bible studies consistently every month because we started these bible studies i'm going to tell you the Lord, I was, I had dropped Justice off and I had to go to Walmart and go do something. It was on a Sunday and I was driving and I did not feel like coming on. But the Lord kept telling me to come on and do a live prayer call. And I did. I was obedient and I did. After the live prayer call, no, while we was on the live prayer call, because I, I took you guys inside of Walmart with me. Remember, we went inside of Walmart. After that live prayer call, the Lord birthed these um, new Bible study with Kira's. He, he started birthing because we were already doing Bible studies. We were doing Bible studies sometimes throughout the week, but mostly on Sundays. But he was showing me to do them every month. And we focused from different things in the Bible. And I was like, wow. Then he birthed the creative hours. It's like every time God would birth something new in the midst of whatever I was dealing with. And then before that, many of you um, came as well because Prophetess Kim, she asked me, could I come on her prayer line? And I did. I think I was on the line maybe two or three times. And many of your lives were changed through the woman of God, through what God was doing with her, but through those certain calls. And then I noticed God start birthing certain things in me to be obedient to go on her call. So it's like, this is a word for someone. You have to be obedient what God gives you. Whether it feel comfortable or you understand or don't, it's not about you. It's for God to get the glory. But what I was saying um, to that, and we're going to continue on reading because I want to get off. But what I was saying to that was, look at the power of obedience. Look at the power of obedience. You know what I mean? The power of you just simply obeying God. So, but okay, thank you, Lord. That's what I was saying. So anyway, we did the live after so that's after that. So then we did this live. It was a month or a couple months later, but it was shortly after. And the Lord had showed me that vision or that dream about those balls. I don't know if y'all remember that. If you go back to our Holy Communion service, I think it's a purple thumbnail. We I think we did the Holy Communion service. We played the trivia game. We played the, our game because y'all know I love games. So we're going to play another one. I told y'all about it with the cash prize. 
I'm believing God for that before the end of this year. But you guys that played the games, you did get prizes. Some of you got prizes mailed to you, and some of you actually got cash prizes. Yeah, but anyway, he showed me this vision or this dream of a basketball court. Of I got to, um, hold on, it's getting hot. Of a, um, I got to turn this back on, guys, I'm sorry. If you hear the, um, the AC blowing, it's going to blow because it's hot. This is Florida we talking about, y'all. I'm sorry. So he showed me the vision of um in South Florida at that. He showed, <laughs> he showed me the vision of this basketball court. Almost I don't want to say a gymnasium. It was like a um all I can say is like high school, middle school, when you go inside of the auditorium and you can play basketball and all those different things. And there was me. I was in my own um, court. I guess you can call it a section. I didn't lose where we at, guys. I know we're still reading, but I have to release this word for somebody. I was in our own little section. It was me, and it was other people in their own sections as well. But we all had people in our sections. So what we was doing was, I wish I had that notebook, but I don't even have that notebook no more. But I released it to you guys. But Holy Spirit is bringing back to my members because it's been about almost a year since I released that, or close to it, about 10 months or close to a year. But anyway, it was last year, I believe. And I had to release that to you guys. And many of you were convicted. And many of you was like, you know, Lord, I repent because that's true. When the Lord, the word is released, I mean, I have to balance that word. You know, people can only do what they can do. If you don't cultivate it or nurture it and you, you got to move in what God gave you to do. The word is released. You got to move in it. But I don't know. I feel like the release is for somebody again. So I'm going to do it. But anyway, there was balls coming. Multiple balls was coming at me. First of all, I was, I felt like I was not qualified to be there. Even though God was showing it to me practically, this was spiritual was going on. I felt like I wasn't qualified. I felt like it was too much because it seemed like when I got one ball, before that ball was even out of my hand, there was another ball coming. Balls just kept coming to me from everywhere. But I was able to catch the balls. And then it's like each time I caught the ball, I gave it to the people that was in front of me that the boss was for. So some people, they took the ball from me and they just held it and stared at me. Some people was working a ball and dribbling a ball. Some people wasn't doing nothing with their ball. And then some people was being faithful with their balls and then more balls were able to come to them. And then I looked around because I was thinking, what is going on? At this time, you know, I, this... We was already going deeper with the YouTube channel. For me, I, I, I really started getting going deeper with the YouTube channel January 2018. Okay? So this came like October, between October and December with this. I forgot when it was, but it was it came before the end of 2019 to me. So God was showing, okay, you being faithful, so keep going. But we started the YouTube channel February 2017. That's why I told you guys February next year in a few months is going to technically be three years. So I looked around and I noticed that there were other people like me. Some were women, some were men. We were all different ages, but we all were in, um, oh, let me, it, this person is from the park here. I was going to open the door to show y'all the parking spot. Like, okay, just for example, cause I can't do it because people are beginning to come in and she's, she's, um, she's parking next to me, whoever this lady is. Just say, for example, the, the parking spot represents one section. Like if you go inside of a um auditorium, okay? Then the next parking spot represents the next next section. So the people that we were around represents the audience and the people that God have for us to minister to. Because I didn't understand it, but then I think when I start telling you guys about it, God started downloading more. Like he started downloading me more after that vision or dream, because I can't remember which one it was. But then when I came on the live and was talking to you guys about it more, he started downloading more. He told me to share it with y'all, right? So, okay, she left. I guess she going to the courthouse. I don't know. But, okay, just look like this. Can y'all see what I'm talking about? That's one area. This is another area, okay? Just give you guys a vision. So, the other people was doing their things, too. And some of their people were doing the same things like the people that I had in front of me. But it's like we all was working together. Although the boss was coming to me, I just was giving them to... So God was showing me that that represents the word, whether it was through devotionals, many of you I poured into you one-on-one, -on -one, many of you I'm still pouring into you one-on-one, -on -one, the YouTube channels, everything that we're doing and then what's beginning to do, that represented the word. 
the people that held the ball and was looking at me was the people and i'm saying this because some of you wasn't on last year and we did this but god is telling me to release this word again for someone because i think i only talked about this maybe twice including today or three times but no more than that i don't think so so it's a reason he's having me to say it again the people that was looking at me and just know all the, all this is, is from God. This channel, everything. It's not me because if it was up to me, I would not do it. I wouldn't do it. I would close away and focus on my, my spiritual walk with God by myself. I'm just being honest with you. But that's not what God want me to do. So I keep going on. Because it's, it's, it's a purpose. It's bigger than me. So the, the people that was holding the ball that was looking at me and if you have a ministry or a channel whatever god is doing through you and your purpose maybe you'll understand this as well for the people that god assigned you to okay people that got no okay so the people that was holding the ball looking at me it's the people that got the word but they're stuck that basically they don't know what to do with the word they don't know what to do with the word but the word is given to them. So now it's in their hands. It's not in my hands no more because I released it to you. It's not in that person's hands no more because they gave you what God gave you. Like just how, like I told y'all last year, for example, and I'm going to say it again the same way. If someone, if God released someone to give me a word, that person did what they needed to do. It's not on them to bring that word to pass. It's not on them to keep prophesying or speaking. No, they gave me what God gave me. Okay, so right here, what are you going to do with it? What are you gonna do with it? Now it's up to you because it's out of their hands. They they're they're obedient. They did their part. I could see if they weren't obedient and then and then do did their part, then that's gonna be between them and the Lord because they're gonna be held accountable for holding that in when they're supposed to release that. That's why y'all gonna see these videos popping the way out. It's been popping like this because a lot of these videos were supposed to come out years ago, and because I don't want no pressure with God, I don't want nothing with Him like that. I fear Him, reverential fear, but then I fear Him. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not on that. Okay. I don't want to be held accountable for nothing negative. Why you didn't release this word? Why you didn't release this video? Why you didn't share this? Word? No, Lord, if I can do it. I know sometimes I have my hiccups, but for the most part, I go past how I feel and what I'm dealing with and my emotions and I persevere and I do what the Lord tell me to do. Amen. The people that was dribbling their ball was the people that was taking the word and applying it to their life. They had the faith to receive it, but they also had the faith to catch the word of God and catch the revelation that God was giving to them. And they were applying it to the life. So they dribbling a ball, right? So the different people that was doing different things represents what they're doing with the word, right? So I don't know who that's for, but that's a word for someone. Some of you, Lord, <laughs> some of you may feel like, well, God, she say these words, but I don't never see it. I want to ask you a question. Do you so back? If you say, well, I can't financially sew back, and it's not about that. It's just, it's the principle. You know how many people pour into me and not sew back into them? It doesn't matter about the amount. It's the principle. It's about the honoring God. But whether you sew or not, that's not the point. Because God is going to provide and take care of me anyway, and I don't do that for that. It's just the principle with sowing and reaping. But I would like to ask you, do you sow? Do you have double-mindedness? Do you really believe the word of God? Do you listen to the word? And then a few days later, or a few hours later, you didn't forgot what the word say, or you don't even believe. You got to look at these certain things. How's your attitude? How's your character? How are you living? Because many of you, a lot of you email me and text me and say, hey, that word was for me. And you comment too, that word was for me. This was life changing. You prayed this for, for me, or you believe with me, or you sent me this and I received and I believe it in. I got this job. I wrote this book. I, I wrote this song. God blessed me with this house. God paid off this debt. God restored my marriage. There are so many different praise reports and testimonies. I told y'all that come through the channel. Don't have nothing to do with me. It's all glory to God because God can use anybody. I'm just trying to be obedient. And then there's some of you, you get your blessing and you don't so back. You don't even email and share the praise report. You don't even comment. You just keep sucking up, sucking up, sucking up. And then you wonder, but that's on you. You know, some of you, you listening, but you don't even pray. You don't even say, Lord, Lord, thank you for using her to bless me. Or God, you know what? God bless her. That may have been your seed. You see what I'm saying? And it's not about the seed so nobody don't lose me. It's about if, if you're constantly going out to eat and eat and eat. And all you're doing is eat and you don't pay back. You don't even say, wow, thank you for that meal. What's going to happen with you? You think you're going to just keep going? Even just look at this for some of you that go to church. Because I know many of you don't 
go to church. Maybe I'm not saying this is your church because I'm not saying that. But maybe this is your place where God feed you. But let's say there are some people, and I know people like this, but God bless them. There are some people that go to church. They don't sow. They don't give. They don't tithe. They don't even thank God for that word. And they're wondering why they're not receiving certain things. Look at their life. Look at their character. Look at their motives. So I don't know who I went there for, but I went there. Amen. That's that's something to think about. And I also want you to keep in mind that whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Oh, you will reap. Whatever I'm sowing, I'm going to reap. It's, it, that's Bible. That's biblical and it's a universal principle. Whatever it is, if it's positive or negative, if it's good or bad. So when we give you guys these words, many of you receive them. So don't take offense and say, well, it's not me. Then I'm not talking to you. <laughs> you know, I love all of y'all, but housekeeping. The Lord told me to release that for someone. And that's for someone. That's just what it is. Ain't no sugar coating. That's what it is. That's what it is. Amen. So who knows? Because your support could have been sharing it with someone else. Or your, your support could have just been really receiving the word that was given to you and actually applying it to your life. Just receive what God gave you. All right, we read Psalms 23. Guys, I want to hurry and get off of here. It's 845 now. Yeah, I want to hurry because I got to go do homework, some more homework. The last one we're going to read is Psalms 91. Psalms 91. I didn't know the Lord was going to have me release all of that. I just thought it was going to be scriptures, but to God be the glory. And amen. Psalms 91, we're going to read this verse by verse and we will close. Psalms 91 says, He who dwells, verse 1, in the shelter. And I do want to thank all of you that sow, see, that support, that comment, that like, that share. That even if you never email me or comment or share, you just receive the word of God and your life is blessed. Excuse me, that's a blessing to me because that means I'm doing what God needs me to do and it's producing fruit. And we see with this, there's a lot of fruitfulness and different blessings that are, oh, excuse me, that are, that are produced. And it's going to, all it's going to keep doing, guys, as we continue on with the channel, it's just going to keep flourishing and enlarging and increasing and producing. Amen. Until God say, Rakira, step back and don't do it no more. For, for the most part, I'm going to keep going full throttle. I'm going to get everything God got for me and you are too. And I'm going to keep pushing you and rooting for you and being obedient and being a blessing to your life to help you draw closer to God. Whoever God using in your life. But I know that if you own this channel and you subscribe and you viewing, he have led you here for a reason. Right? So Psalms 91 verse 1. Let's keep going. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty or El Shaddai in the Hebrew. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Verse 3, surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. Verse 4, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Amen. And I love Psalms 91 personally as well. Verse 5, you will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day. Let me get something to drink, y'all. Verse 6, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that discords at midday. Verse 7, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Verse 8, you will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Verse 9, if you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge. Verse 10, then no harm will befall you, no disaster will come near your tent. Verse 11, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Verse 12, they will lift you up in their hands so that you would not strike your foot against a stone. Verse 13, you will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. 20, I'm sorry, not, where I was going to say 29 from. 14 because he loves me says the lord i will rescue him i will protect him for he acknowledges my name okay i remember why i'm saying 29 from i'm thinking about um something else 15 he will call upon me and i will answer him i will be with him in trouble i will deliver him and honor him 16 with long life will i satisfy him and show him my salvation so just a really quick recap Psalms 27, Psalms 23, Psalms 91, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14 is what we read from the day. Those are also our readings, but also our prayers. I gave you guys the ball analogy. Told you guys what we're doing with the channel and a little housekeeping. I love y'all. Everyone have a beautiful, blessed day. Thanks for watching.